All right. Welcome back, friends. Today we're gonna come full circle. Exactly one year ago, to the month, I started making videos in which I talk about art and... The video that started it all was one where I painted an eye and where I talked about some of the simple concepts and ideas behind realism. And as fate would have it, exactly one year later I'm commissioned to create a similar painting. Only supersized. So that's what we're gonna do today. As you can see, with a very basic and rough sketch in place, I start things off by simply focusing on all the dark areas. And to do that, I use pure black paint, straight from the tube. But aren't you supposed to avoid that at all costs, you might be wondering? Well, here's a secret. It doesn't matter. And also, I don't really care, but no idea who started this weird notion that you can't use black color, because it's just color, like every other color. I know some people argue that you shouldn't use black paint because Pure black can rarely be seen in the real world, but as I like to say, who cares about the real world? We're creating art here. So after having painted the darkest areas and the iris, I move on to paint the white of the eye, which is a weird thing to say because there's technically nothing white about it. As you can see, I'm still using fairly dark grey paint to paint it. And here's one of the secrets behind the illusion of realism. And that is, context is everything. The area I'm painting now is grey, but once I've finished filling out the whole surface and especially the colors next to it, our brain will automatically interpret it as white. As long as you capture the context of a color, meaning the relationship to its surrounding colors, you are automatically bound to create at least some illusion. It's not about the right colors or the right whatever. There is no right or wrong. The only thing that matters is the relationship between things. When painting the eyelids, for example, the only thing I focus on is to capture how light or dark the areas are in relation to everything I've already painted. I don't care if it's as dark or light or the same color as the reference. Nothing could be less important. There is far more leeway when painting than most people realize. You can think of it as changing the contrast or the colors of a photo with an app. You can change all these things, but most of the time, you are still able to recognize the object on the photo and it will continue to look quote unquote real. After painting the areas around the eyeball and the eyebrow, I go back to make some slight adjustments. Laying the right foundation from the beginning will make or break the whole painting in the end. Because the final illusion, the final effect, completely depends on it. From here on out, everything only gets amplified. The convincing areas become even more convincing, but the less convincing areas will look even more out of place. After I've painted the eye, it's time to move on to the background. Now, as you know, to me, there is no cookie dough without a pinch of salt, so I add some abstractions to the whole painting. And while this is just my style or preferred aesthetic, it's not without a reason. Both elements will not only complement each other, but they will also enhance their individual effects. As I said, context is everything. A red dot in a sea of rainbow colored dots will not only look like everything else, it will also completely get lost. But a red dot in a sea of grey dots will not only visually jump right at you, but it will also look much more intense than its rainbow color surrounded counterpart. One of my pet peeves is classical artists speak. Rendering, color value, turning forms, etc. Not because I don't like these words, but because the concepts and ideas behind them couldn't be more overrated. The truth is, how accurate the color values are couldn't be lower in the hierarchy of what makes a good and successful piece of art. Most of the greatest paintings ever created have tons and tons of errors and inaccuracies in them. But it doesn't matter. You just need to look at the work of an illustrator or an expressionist or 
any other great artist that is not a classical realist to see that you can bend and play with these concepts to your heart's content. And when you do, well, that's when art starts to get really interesting. But I digress. So after I filled out the whole painting surface, it's time to go back to where we started. To push the realism a bit further. And while I do that, I would like to take a minute to thank today's sponsor Skillshare. As you guys know, I'm all about thinking outside of the box, learning new things and being creative. And since it's the start of a new decade, one could argue it's the ideal time to do just that. And Skillshare is a great place for that. You get to explore thousands of classes with topics ranging from boosting your creativity to demystifying graphic design. You can learn about drawing, editing videos, all kinds of things. And the most beautiful thing is, you can discover topics and skills you didn't even know you were interested in. For example, graphic design basics, core principles for visual design. A short and sweet primer on some of the very basic design principles every artist should know. And the truth is, having a basic understanding of these design principles is infinitely more useful than knowing how to paint something realistically. And at just $10 a month, for an unlimited premium membership, Skillshare is absolutely not going to break the bank. But since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get two months of the premium membership for free. So I highly encourage you guys to make use of that opportunity. Now when I'm going over areas a second time, I usually do one of two things. On the one hand, I adjust the contrast meaning light areas get lighter and dark areas darker. But on the other hand, what's even more important, I focus on correcting edges and transitions. Capturing how different surfaces reflect light is one of the biggest deciding factors in how quote unquote real or convincing the things you paint look. Even though what I've painted up till now already looks quite convincing, it's when I capture the soft edge of the iris that the illusion really starts to sell itself. And after I capture the tiny reflections on the wet skin of the lower eyelid, all that's left to do to make the illusion complete is to carefully put the eyelashes in place. And then call it a day, because you have to stop at some point. And the truth is, at this point, the law of diminishing returns kicks in. Standing five feet away from the painting, most of what I would paint from now on wouldn't make the slightest difference. Most changes would only be visible from up close and I personally like it when the illusion of realism breaks down up close and a realistic painting turns into abstract art. Guys, thanks so much for watching. It's hard to believe that it's already been a year since I started making videos about art in my free time. And what's even more incredible is that so many of you out there enjoy watching them. Who would have thought? I know I'm not providing the most entertaining videos, no challenges, no experiments, no quote unquote fun stuff, at least not at the moment, but I really hope that I can at least inspire you guys with my philosophical musings or at the very least leave you with some food for thought with my videos. And on that note, if you like the videos and want to see many more in the future, you can help me continue making them by supporting the channel on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you not only help me keep creating these videos, but you also get access to a bunch of rewards and an exclusive Discord server where you and I and a whole bunch of other amazing creative people can hang out any day of the week. And with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. Special thanks to all my $10 patrons and the artists of the roundtable, Madison Duff, Cecilia Hatadi Tegenfeld, Christopher Morrissey, PLC, Rudy Cruz, Senorita Gina, Sierra Briggs Art, Gabriella Milner, Lydia Broderick, Kendra Quinn, Samuel Diefenbach, Sanne Fine Art, Hanna Torvinen and Steffi S. Thanks for being so awesome and for supporting this channel. Guys, your support really goes a long way and thank you all so much for watching guys. Please hit like. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and yeah, have a good one.